really just would like to continue to lead myself into different areas, to be able to touch different areas, to get to education, to get to teaching financial literacy, to teach it, you know what I'm saying? Because the most important thing is not what we learn, but what we teach to our youth. And the things that our youth don't have, we should provide them away. We should talk, talk to them. We should be in some ways gentle, but in some ways firm. And one of the relatable wrestlers to me that was forgotten, we all used to highlight, man, Stone Cold, <laughs> The Rock. Kevin Nash. You raised the eyebrow or what? Oh, no, nah, I ain't never done that. I can't miss it. These don't work like that. But now, look, both of them go up. When both of them go up, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? But um, up, up? we highlighted all those people, but we forgot about the guys who helped get it there. Brian Pillman was one of those people. Yeah, think about it. The only wrestler to sign to the WWF the w WCW and ECW. He got out of his contract by going to Eric Bischoff and telling Eric Bischoff, hey, it would be a good joke or a good plan if you fired me and you drew up a contract. He took that contract to ECW and WWF and negotiated with him through that contract. The era of the era of the attitude era. For me, it started with him. It began with him. Do y'all remember when y'all remember when wrestling came on regular TV? No, I'm almost done. Okay. Junkyard dog days. All right, now I'm gonna take you back. It's an episode of Raw. No, it, it was an episode of Raw when Pillman broke his ankle. Mm -hmm. Pillman's sitting on the couch with a gun. Stone Cold trying to break in his house. He break in and they scrambled the screen. They had to apologize for that. That was the start of the attitude there. That was the actual start of the attitude there. Nobody was running around doing the shit he was doing. Nobody was. He was doing all erratic, crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And then after he passed, and then if you look after he passed away, everything took off. Because you had him Gold dust, ugh, gold dust. Gold he used dust. to trip out. That shit used to be wild. Pause. That nigga was wild. Um, mankind. You had him, mm -hmm. and really those three that were really just doing all of the wild shit. Everybody else was pretty much just sticking to their. We're we're like the lead role people, but mm -hmm. Pillman never got his credit, and I felt like that. The character that he portrayed, the loose cannon character, that was kind of like, oh, I related, I was relatable, because that's me. <laughs> that's me. You, so, had a, you had a Nacho Libre moment? <laughs> oh, Ramses is not here to take the party. <laughs> Ramses. <laughs> Sorry, man. I can't believe you brought that shit up. That's one of my favorite fucking movies. Boom, 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 boom. Man, that fucking movie is crazy. Bro, that fucking movie was fucking crazy. You wasn't expecting that shit, huh? Yeah, See no, what I'm saying? No. See what I mean? No. no. And I'll, that's, and that's, that's. I wasn't expecting, but it's not a surprise. Yeah, it shouldn't be. <laughs> Nothing not should surprise. be a surprise, it's not man. A surprise. But I. I, that's that was my thing. It was like, okay, I've had this project in my head for 25 years. Mm -hmm. All of the samples were inside my head. I just needed somebody that was able to manif help me manifest. manifest that. So oh. when I hit him and I say, bro, I hit him on the phone, I say, bro, 
I got a project. You just got to promise you don't tell nobody. Told him the name. And that night, and he can go back to his text, mes text messages and show you. I sent him about 30 samples of Brian Pillman. And the time stamps. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, at 344, at such and such, at such and such. And as time went on, he began to think like me. And that's my whole point. Mm -hmm. I want you to think like me. Don't be me. Just think like me. And when you think like me, you're thinking outside of everything. You're seeing everything from up here, not here. Because yeah. sometimes when you're here, you can't see everything from here. So let's look from up here. We can still look from, from, from this perspective, but let's look from up here. Because when we up here, we see everything. Now we can point out things. And then we can come back here and walk in and you know, we, the first two, I had the first two, I had the, what, the first two songs done in, what, probably the first week? Mm -hmm. First two songs was done. Uh, the yeah. first. The, and it's a piece of, it's like pieces to a puzzle, but he did like the middle of the puzzle, beginning of the album. The first song was called, or the original name of the song was called Turnbuckle. Lord Jesus. And <laughs> the reason it was called Turnbuckle, <laughs> Was cause I I had a partner and I used to tell him his mama sold turnbuckles, so wow. <laughs> that, wow. so it was so like it's only right that so disrespectful boy. Yes, I am. Those everybody, those shout out to everybody that know me out here that's gonna watch this. Yo, mama sold turnbuckles. Yes, buckles, yes, I'm still disrespectful. How much they go for? I don't know, bro. <laughs> but she used to say, I she used to steal the turnbuckles after you know the wrestling was over. She. Wow. Steal them and sell them. You know, you have like Andre the Giant sweat on a turnbuckle. You can sell that <laughs> motherfucker on eBay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but um, you know, so the first, the name of the first song was Turnbuckle. So then he called me one day. He was like, "Hey, I got an idea." I was like, "All right, what's up? Let's change the name of the first song." <laughs> I'm like, "Nah, bro. I like Turnbuckle. I'm a odd." Man, I like odd shit because I know odd shit mm -hmm. makes people think even. You know what I'm saying? Odd evens out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so he was like, nah, 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 we're going to change the name. I said, man, you going to change the name? He said, yeah, we're going to change it to Vince McMahon. I said, fuck it. All right. So we changed it to Vince. He threw his magic on there, and then we had that. And then the second song was... Somebody get the gun. <sighs> Man, listen, I'm gonna give y'all the backstory to this song. Um, a couple years ago, I lost a string of family members. Yeah. I mean, not like, not like a week, week, week. I'm talking about day by day, mm -hmm. day by day, they died, and it affected me mentally mm -hmm. to where I kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. So when I shut down, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to heal from these things. So I stopped talking. Uh-oh. Pick it up. Go ahead, bro. Go I ain't going to stop ahead. talking. <laughs> I ain't going to lose. I don't I lose. going to pretend like yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. Good. Hey, bro, I, I don't lose train of thought. Up, you just <laughs> messed up his moment. No, no, no. You good. You I don't never lose train of thought. Uh, so what ended up happening we're is. We're here. We're here. We're here. Yeah, we good. I mean. What ended up happening is I called him. I said, hey, bro, just need a little time. So while I'm taking that time, more people just start dying. It was like, oh, uh, it was like had a checklist. And he was like, uh. Get you out of here. Get you out of here. They're like Get you the fuck out of here. <laughs> Bro, they was just dying, and, and, and I couldn't cry. And I couldn't feel sorrow enough or, or, or even. Was this COVID? It was COVID, heart attacks, all kinds. It was just like, he was just like, it's too many of y'all, come on home. So, mm -hmm. one day. They got digital banking, that's what it is. And let's get it all of the old school, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one day, I, I came home. He had sent me, he, he just sent me the beat. He didn't, he was like, here, check this out. He sent me the beat. So, you know, I got a pistol or whatever, and I'm sitting there, there's nobody there, it's just me. It's just me at home by myself. And 
as crazy as this may sound, I started talking to my pistol. Okay. And I wrote it down. That's why when you listen to the song, I say, without my issue, I don't feel straight. What my issue do paranoia seem to create? This is the conversation that I'm having here because it's three people present when you talk to yourself. If you're talking to an object, yourself, and God. Mm. Two of those is one, but we separate them when it's time to pray or when it's time to manifest, we separate them. So just imagine. Mm-hmm. If you, if I tell you this is it's on this is on y'all program <laughs> that I'm saying I was talking to a fucking gun. Yeah, I believe you. When you hear the song and you listen, you like, wait a minute. This dude really without my pistol, I don't feel I don't feel safe with my pistol. Do paranoia see me create for the safety of me? Death be I mediate. Times elevate when the life is at stake. When the round is fired, are these the breaks? Playing street high stakes, the losers are lost faith. You know what I'm saying? Like it, for me, it it started out as me talking to my gun, and then it started out as me looking at it from a God's perspective, which is up here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If God sees all, He's here. Not saying He in the sky, but His view is clear. So how would God view two of us shooting each other? What kind of perspective would that be? Mm-hmm. So I wrote it. So you can kind of hear me changing from my, from my conversation with the gun to my conversation with, or to the, the conversation of God from the perspective of seeing all this. And I have crazy ideas Mm -hmm. and I make them work. However I make them work and I'm, shout out to Wayne, man, for, you know, working with me because working with crazy people can drive you crazy. (laughs) That was like a harmonica moment. (laughs) Man, (laughs) Texas right there. Do y'all know how hard it was for me to have, and I told him, I was like, bro, Eventually, I'm gonna have to explain part of that song or explain that song to people because that song wasn't just about that conversation. It was all also about gun control. Imagine the background check you gotta explain. <laughs> I mean, like, <sighs> man, look, like that the, shit doesn't that shit void your shit? Oh uh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you talking to it? Look, you know what man, I mean? as long as you ain't get checked in. You yeah, good. I but look, uh, but that's not. That's really crazy though bro yeah. you know what i'm saying if you really think about it like it, it's i mean people nothing, talk to their horse exactly you know what i mean but like hey but a horse can't respond what a gun gonna do shoot back <laughs> shit that motherfucker <laughs> can't respond shit. but no it's no different than you than you acting out a conversation in your mind yeah but you know what i'm saying you be like i'm gonna say this they gonna say this yeah yeah but, like but this. we live in an environment that they'll be like oh you about to shoot out of high school you know yeah. what i mean like that's that's really what it is but, like like you can't really you it's a sensitive subject you yeah. know what i mean and so now like how the fuck are you gonna sell that no, you know man, what i mean i just i mean we've talked about it before right like if it wasn't if it wasn't for my belief and my faith in god i would have taken my life years ago i understand that you bro. get what i'm saying yeah so that's that's not hearing you writing something or talk having a conversation with a gun is not far-fetched for me i'm like i get it yeah you know what i'm saying like i, I get it you know what i'm saying but i just think we try to hide what's real. Like, yeah. bro, are you telling me, like, that's why I'm like, bro, you telling me you don't have those thoughts? Are you telling me you ain't had those conversations with yourself? Yeah. You telling me you don't think, like, you lying. But that shit goes you know on your saying? diary, bro. Like, that shit doesn't nah, fucking, bro. you it, know what I mean? Because that, that, that's some shit that, like, Bro, I'm we, not talking we all... about murdering some kids. I'm not talking about, <laughs> that's like, bro, like, we're talking about a conversation. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm not sitting on a park bench having a conversation. But I thought that, that shit was supposed to be, like, a number one hit that we're trying to do right here. Yeah, but no, it is. But I'm just saying, like, dude, I just think. I just think sometimes we we just not real. It's just like what we said, right? If we actually combined all the resources and the talents of everyone yeah. we've had on this show, we can probably do some amazing things. We'll be, but the thing is, is people don't want to 
you don't want to be real. You don't want to give too much away because, like you said, that shows your weakness. There's no probably to that. I was ain't no probably to that. I was telling him that. You are. You are. Can y'all can think think about this? Can you say that for me? What? Y'all are going to do something amazing. Y'all already have done something. No, no, no. no, But but I was telling him. Check this out. So I was telling him. I'm like, okay, you can you can literally go get a get a a water bottle from 99 cent store, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can get a water bottle from Ralph's. Safeway, whatever, right? Yeah. And then you tell them, hey, choose between one or the other, right? Majority of people are going to choose the the Safeway, Ralph's, whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. They're always going to d- disregard the 99 cent store. Now, they both are the same brand, but that doesn't really matter Where because like the cost of it doesn't mean shit. So that's really what it is. That's why I'm telling him, I'm like, like, if you go and hold to your standards and gamble that shit, like sooner or later is gonna hit. Maybe you're not gonna do it. Like, maybe you're not gonna experience that like alive. And and motherfuckers, when you die, all of a sudden your shit's gonna be popping like everybody else that dies. You know what I mean? But the reality is you gotta stay true to yourself because the you're never gonna you're never gonna be able to be like remembered by being the same. It's all about being authentic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that that game changer. Yep. But speak, speaking of the game changer, right? Yo, killer, man. Because I've, I've been letting you just sit idle over here, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, we like, we got to put the spot. It's that nigga turn, like, man. Like, <laughs> spot, 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 I, spot it's that nigga turn. Today, all right? He's ready. He's ready. But Look no, at him. No, but no. In all seriousness, like, you know, when we was talking yes. about, you was like, you don't just create and produce music that just gets you on the dance floor. All right, it ain't about just dancing and, and having a good time. It, mm-hmm. Even though that's important and that's good, you mm-hmm. need that balance, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, like Tim said, that odd and that even creates that yeah, balance. Like good therapy. Um, good therapy. But you create it for that healing. Yeah. You know like what I'm therapy. saying? Talk about that, man. Talk about your. Talk about that. Like, people know it's, it's, um, it's feelings and frequencies in music. So, you, the industry today, they kind of hacked it to the point like it's controlling the worst part of us right now. And people don't even realize it's going on. So I choose to do the opposite and tap on like life things and healing, you know, healing factors and therapy, you know, traumas, but you know, trying to spin it in a good way. Like uh, like the birdie uh, that I just dropped with Pac. It was like an inspiration from the Dear Mama documentary that just dropped. For sure. But think about what the Hughes brothers did. They didn't do what everybody did on their documentaries about Pac. They talked about the accountability of Pac also. So I kind of spent that into our society, how we treat us, and like even like far as the violent side of us, like Pac had that. Like Pac wasn't just a revolutionary guy. He also talked about the bullshit too, right? And nobody never spoke on that till I seen that documentary. And uh, you remember the interview? Uh, what was that guy on BET? Uh, Tim, Tavis Smiley. Yeah, yeah. That that clip I had with Tavis Smiley at the end of that uh, Hollywood, you hear me? You know my boy was singing on there, but like they didn't pay attention to the dialogue. Tevin uh, Smiley said, "I feel like you being pimped." They was pimping Pac in the, in, during that time. They was pimping the image. They were bouncing them back and forth, like even from the trials and stuff, should kind of manifested and, and took Pac from us in a devilish way. Because he bought him out. Right. You know, Pac was getting beat in prison, man. He wanted to get a way out. I know for a fact that, that, that Tupac did not want to sign with these people, but he had to get out. Because realistic, realistically, if Suge never came and bought that man out, Pac would finna do a lot of years hmm. because of that case. So it's like people don't think about the accountability of the things that actually happened that led up to that murder, man. 
And you know, you know, we can't go too deep because it's, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of stuff that happened yeah. that nobody's talking about. Pac was in jail so long he grew a fro. Y'all remember? Yeah, it was weak, <laughs> but ah yeah. uh, man, let me not let me chill out. But it was weak. But no, I love Pac, bro. I love Pac. <laughs> that fro weak. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just pay attention to everything, bro. I, I, I have an observing eye. And, when he was in, he was locked down. They had the picture of uh, Rummy mm-hmm. Sanderford in the bag, and I, I just remember that fro. I was like, hell nah, come mm-hmm. on, man, let my nigga out so he cut that <laughs> shit out. He ain't here with a fro. Now even also with the healing frequencies, we always try to give some type of metaphor and message through whatever the concept of my projects or or his projects. You know, like even if you go back to uh, if you ever listen to Red Pill on. on on my project, list. it was a beat tape. Well, uh, probably like one artist well, was on that raw, yo. Yeah, raw. Artist. Yeah. But people thought it was just R and B songs. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what, <laughs> bro? I didn't say that. I'm sorry. It, it was it was it was, was an R and B beat tape, but we used dialogue from '90s movies. Mm, okay. Like all the love movies, but we started the the Boom first track. Yeah, we started the first track with uh. The Matrix, so uh, when they were talking about the red pill, blue pill, so it's like it stemmed from there. But I started using the '90s movies and metaphors to what he was saying. That's all. And it was like we fall in love with technology. You know, it's, it's like falling in love with technology. We going through the classes of technology, and then I'm trying to tell y'all how to break up with technology. Oh, y'all through, wanted through, controversy. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Through '90s movies. <laughs> Course. Like, like if you listen to it, like you, man, you, like you can hear what we're talking about, but it's through nineties movies. If you take the dialogue of, uh, well, like Boomerang, uh, I even use Belly when um, Keisha and DMS got into it. Like, that's the break of a technology, and then, then the last artist on the album, he started explaining, it. and in his, you know, in his form, what I was talking about the whole time. Okay. So it's kind of like. It went from R.B. to like, bam, lyrical mayhem. They like, what the hell? On a R.B. B tape? TikTok and all, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, <Sure. both> time. <laughs> like, so each tape you check out, I have some type of hidden message through everything. For sure. Who are uh, who are some of your favorite producers? Oh, uh, Soldier Boy. <laughs> I'm just playing, hey right, bro. Soldier boy, if you see this, bro, I'm just playing, bro. <laughs> Chill, <laughs> don't. Please don't do that, bro. Yeah, don't be like this. He's, he's a very smart producer. Bro. Yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> Bro, he made so much money, bro, but he's a smart guy. Bro, I just be playing, man. Yeah, Listen, y'all don't take mom. me serious. Yeah. Canceled. <laughs> yeah, I'm canceled. He, he finna do a live on Instagram. Yeah. A no name rapper <laughs> saying my name? Oh, my Tim? God. Tim Nix? <laughs> like, bro, chill, bro. It's a joke. God <laughs> damn. I should not even know black people named Tim. Tim That's man, right. Man. That's <laughs> fucked up. He better not. He gonna do I, a Superman on you. Hey, shout <laughs> I just, Soldier Boy, I never bought a pair of your shoes, but you Soldier know. Boy he has shoes. He has bro, shoes. hold on, you y'all never. No, bro, you there's like no reason for me to know. Bro, you forty some years old, bro. I, I, so, I, I, I never I'm know. almost forty, bro. I never. Knew. I remember. Were they Belcros? Hold on, fam. Let me describe them to you. First of all, they were made like high top Air Force Ones. What? And they had a fucking speaker in them, bro. Stuff. That played no. his music. I, I, listen, when I get off this live, I'm gonna show you. I remember. You had him? Hell no. Yeah, you had him. <laughs> How dare you? He still got him. We not friends <laughs> no more. Got Don't do that. Him. Don't he y'all, still y'all, got y'all, him. y'all play too much. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way I'm finna be walking around with no kiss me through the hey, phone switch, playing on my shoe. Put put your put your project in there. Man, hell no! Nah. Them shoes will catch on fire. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> no, it That'll wouldn't work. Them hey, we gonna film it when we get done with this. Bro, don't do that, hey, that's bro. That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. Yeah, it's gonna be oh, hard, all right. We had that solar balls. power. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's gonna be hard not to throw them shoes in the dumpster because I'm not. Man, listen, <laughs> they, them motherfuckers was called SBZ lights, <laughs> and they lit up at the bottom. Fam. They made you hop better. I, I saw one person in a pair. Maybe it was like 
that demographic like they only hit certain markets. Yeah, like look, wasn't it was for kids. Cap, it, it was know. probably for kids, but I know I know one thing he did that I didn't I wasn't a part of, but I didn't get a chance to to get into. But he had came out with his own video game, and that shit was dope. Soldier Boy had a video game. Yes, bro. he had came out with his own video game, bro. That shit was an FDA wasn't it, approved. Wait, 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 was it a fighting game? <laughs> nah, it was like a, a kind of like how. Let's say your local flea market or your local like like little little store on the side where they sell like a PlayStation that's been unlocked and it got like five thousand games on it or something like that. Yeah, so it was something oh, in the realm yeah, of that. It was something yeah, in the realm of that. Awesome. And my thing is, my thing is with 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 that is, a lot of people don't give him the respect that he's due. Now I wasn't I wasn't a super fan his mu of his music because. When his music came on in the club, I knew it was time to go home. Because <laughs> everybody finna be Superman in and doing all this shit. And if you step on my shoe, I'm a headbutt you. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? He don't get his, like, and he really, to be honest, he ushered us into this era oh, of social definitely. media. Yeah. Because yeah. without him, Artists don't know that they can make this much money off YouTube or this off YouTube. But didn't you say you hate this? I do. Yeah, so, like, fuck that then. It's <laughs> you know a love-hate I mean? relationship. Like, he fucks shit up. But you can't knock the hustle. Yeah, you can't knock his hustle. Can't listen, hustle. I can't, listen. I, a pr prime example, you can dislike, you can, let, let's say you dislike Shaquille O'Neal, but you cannot doubt you cannot say that Shaquille O'Neal wasn't a monster. So you can you cannot like somebody and mm -hmm. still respect their hustle and their drive because that's that's always the 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 key to each person is their hustle and their drive and their determination. No matter if they selling sacks of shit, you know what I'm saying, Ziploc <laughs> bags of shit. Yeah. Hey, if your hustle good, you can get yeah. this shit off. Yeah. Bars, but, but no. Hey, but no. Drake, Drake it. You know what I mean? But oh no, my but they, God. they say all the time, you don't even got to be good no more. You just got to be yeah. consistent. Drake, yeah. came, he yeah. was in the wheelchair, and then look at him now. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Drake for wearing for for wearing hey, hey. for, for turtlenecks. He, he, he cat daddy <laughs> to fucking success. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Drake ten for wearing turtlenecks and being like skinny. Yeah. Hold, hold up, I got turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, you don't count. But bro. no, no, back up, back up. Come on, back up. <laughs> I know, so they keep you warm and yeah. shit, <laughs> <laughs> bro. We no. not, bro. You're not no. about to sit no. here and explain. Bro, it's no, all good. It's all good. We don't need that. Right? But no, killer, man. Let's get back to your producer. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Come, on, Come on, let him get to his producers, man. Oh, right, shit, right. producers, man. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> killer, killer, and turtlenecks too. You know. Right? But, oh shit. But nah, but, 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 Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla. One, he one of the main ones, bro. Like, R.I.P. Like I was telling you earlier, man. His his documentary had me in tears a little bit, bro. I had to, cause it's kind of like how my story is. Like all these producers, you know, all these artists around me, you just don't, you give so much. Like that man, that man got sick, man. Like, I mean, he ain't, he didn't get his just do of who he was, bro. All right, other this, than Jay, who else we got? Yeah, who else on um, the list? Kanye. That's what, Didn't know. they call you Yay Texas or yeah, Texas was, Jay? Yeah, I hated that name, bro. Like, uh, uh. H Town Kanye. I was like, oh man, come on, bro. Cause like, cause I always love soul, but Kanye was one of my favorites though, bro. Like, but no ID started that, man. You know, eight oh eight heartbreak. What do you think about that? That's when I was like, that was different for me. Like, I ain't never heard no <laughs> shit like that before. But that was brilliant. Like, he had you thinking though, right? Yeah, like he started experimenting. That's when Kanye became Kanye. Like those scents and frequencies and all that. That's that's when it started with me. Sure. When I started thinking about frequencies because of him. Organized Noise. That's another uh, production group that I love. They stir is crazy. Like mm -hmm. if you ever seen their stuff on Netflix, it's wild. Yeah. Like who else? Uh, uh oh, DJ Premier. Of course. You know where he from, right? Yeah. H -town. You know, I didn't that was like later in the game. Yeah. So where mm -hmm. I figured, you know, I was like, What? I'm like mm -hmm. I always just Oh, he from New York. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. He from New York. But dang, okay. Yeah. DJ Premier, anyone else? 
Ooh, oh, oh, Pimp C, another okay. producer, like rapper slab producer, but Pimp C had it, man. Like he, you know, he used to be in band, but he did a lot of beats for UGK, man. Like that funk, like whew. You know, that was one of my influences too. Like UGK, probably was the ones who made me want to start doing beats. Okay. Yeah, cause that. It was just something about that group, man. Like that talk and that. It was just something different about them too, man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna switch it up a little bit, right? So outside of music, right? We start with you, Tim. Uh, outside <laughs> of music, is there anything you would like to accomplish? Let's see. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, he's like, I want to ride a bike. Yeah, well, I, I, I ain't, you know, I, I rode a bike recently, but it was weak. The handlebars was loose. I was trying not to fire up. Fuck all that. But um, I really just would like to continue to lead myself into different areas to be able to touch different areas to get to education to get to teaching financial literacy to teach it you know what i'm saying because the most important thing is not what we learn but what we teach to our youth and the things that our youth don't have we should provide them away we should talk talk to them we should be in some ways gentle, but in some ways firm. My father, shout out to my pops, love your daddy, you know what I'm saying? My mama too, cause you know, she'll be on me, she'll be on my road body. But for as stern as my father was, he was also gentle within that sternness. And those tough times are what help make me understand that I needed my parents, that my parents went through traumas themselves that mm -hmm. they hadn't yet gotten over, but mm -hmm. they were still able to teach me right from wrong, Fair still understand. able to love me, still able to mm -hmm. provide me with a life, provide me with food, provide me with clothes, provide me with love, provide me with care. Maybe not all the time when I felt like it, but they were there. So. Mm -hmm. As a black man, as a man, period, I would like to my nieces, my nephews, my friends' kids, y'all children, we all continue to provide them with the lessons and, and, and with the knowledge that we didn't get when we were their age. Provide it for them now. Give it to them now. Don't wait till later. Start teaching them early. So at the point when they become our age or when they become teenagers, they have more than an understanding, they comprehend. You have to comprehend before you understand. And I would like to con you know, continue helping the homeless people. You know, the people who are overlooked. Like that lady we seen outside? No comment. <laughs> that's a different story y'all that's gonna be a, that's a whole different uh, uh, we could talk about two hours about that that was some wild shit we pulled up welcome to LA listen yeah, listen listen, listen y'all for y'all that don't know we are from Houston we see wild shit all the time but seeing somebody use oh, you know what I'm gonna stop just, yeah, just, just leave, leave it there I'm gonna you, leave you, it there. You, you took video on it of course Didn't, I did. Okay, hey, just tell them to check your reels. Yeah, well, I don't know if y'all can story. check my reels because I can't block out what was in it. It was some, man, look, her. She her, was doing her thing. She was doing more than her thing. It was terrible. Was but anyway, <laughs> but um, I, I just would like to, to get back to letting, teaching our kids how to fend for themselves. Um, my family being from the country, well, being pretty much everywhere, but solely the country, the East Texas, mm -hmm. we learn how to hunt, we learn how to cook, we learn how to shoot, we learn how to, it's a lot of things that, let's say all the power go out, it's no more food. I'm good. I know how to hunt. Mm -hmm. 
know what I'm saying? We might need you. We got a hurricane coming. It's not a purge. It's not a purge. But that's you know what I'm saying. The the the, the integral parts of of survival, I've learned, and I understand, and. I want us to get back to showing our children these things and providing these things for them. And if it's necessary to build programs, we build programs. Let's build program and, and let's also build programs for the homeless people and for the elderly people, man, because elderly people get overlooked. Hold up, right quick. Y'all keep going, keep going. And elderly, a lot of elderly people get overlooked. And I, I, I really don't like the fact that elderly people get overlooked. You don't overlook elderly people, children, and old, old people. No, no, no. That, that That's basically about it. Like, I think elderly people and, and children, because they can't defend themselves. Yeah. And, like, especially right now, like, a lot of elderly people are going through some shit, especially with inflation. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they yeah. can't do nothing about it. Like yeah. all they can do is just hope to survive, and that's and it's and it's messed up, right? Like um, I don't know if you guys heard about the whole little uh, Hawaii little fire or whatever, yeah. right? They're talking about like we're gonna give them seven hundred dollars, but then they gave Ukraine like ten billion dollars yeah, not so long ago. All that stuff, that's crazy. No, no, what I do you guys maybe, think about that? I think maybe they owe Ukraine. Because America, for some reason, and I've asked several people this, how the fuck do we owe somebody three trillion? Who do we owe three trillion dollars? Man, Ukraine Who are we? was recouping. Yeah. Who that are wasn't we? And they doing it too. I don't yeah. know if you guys seen them reels. Like they out there popping yeah. bottles and shit. Yeah, it like, hey, we need that back. Like, like I feel like they they gave them the passwords and shit. You know what I mean? So they're like, all right, bet. Like you you better pay up. And and it's sad because at the end of the day, like these people are like basically on their way out, and they can't even have any decent decent living. You know what I mean? Like they can't even um, provide for themselves. And, and it's unfortunate that a lot of people, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of good things, right? And I, I've always been a, a fan of Texas. Yeah. I'm not from there, but you know. Um, shout out to the Dallas Cowboys. I ain't gonna lie, but <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I feel like um, if there's one thing that's very, um, I want to say, enforced in Texas is values, right? Yeah. And and I think that we're that's big, what the nation needs, yeah, right? We need those values. We're very big on it. Yeah. Like like you guys have the the emphasis. Like I think like your guys' schools is considered like one of the top ones because of of values right well well let me let me go ahead and speak to that because we just got a new superintendent from dallas who is basically garbage garbage, garbage. Like, and i hope he watches this he <laughs> is garbage you are trash you're trash he's kind he came in and he started he's doing the same thing he did in dallas he has a you know you know if 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 some shit stink, it has a history of stinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay attention to the history of stinking, then you start smelling like shit. So, um, he pretty much has come into HISD. My mom still works for HISD. So I have kind of an inside track on what they're doing and they're doing all this unnecessary training. You know, you know whenever, whenever a place decides, we're gonna pay everybody everybody goes yay but then you gotta go through eight 12 to 32 hours of meaningless training when you've been doing this job for 30 years you've been treating people the right way for 30 or 40 years hey it, all they're doing is covering lawsuits that's really what it is you yeah. know what i mean like it, it we live in a society right now where they'll entertain you in order to have a you know their plans or a, a bigger picture you know accepted while you're over here worrying about some stupid shit you exactly. know what i mean and that's exactly. that's the reality that we live in today and but it's i mean we used to have we used to have like superintendents that was that were mm -hmm. on the ball you know what i'm saying dr rod page he was cool um what was the other guy's name it was after rod page it was or the dude before him 
He was like some Joe Clark type nigga, but um, he was cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I'm being honest. Clark. You know what I'm saying? Turn the doors, turn the doors. <laughs> cold and blue. And deliver shit. Cold <laughs> blue. <laughs> nigga hollering like cold blue and shit. You finna go to jail, nigga. <laughs> Fuck is you doing chaining doors? But um, yeah, we had some. And and, and another thing is. Shout out to every high school teacher, every middle school teacher. Well, except for Miss Lee. Fuck you, Miss Lee. <laughs> no, man. You, nah, man. Nah, fuck, fuck her. her. Oh, you fuck already her. know. No, I'm, Lee, I already, nah. I'm already. Off the turnbuckle. Nah, <laughs> off the fucking turnbuckle. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell no, you about this motherfucker, no, dog. let's not do that. Bro. Miss Lee is a good woman. She was doing what she had to do. Bro, she had one big foot and one little foot, bro. <laughs> so like, that's wrong. Like Bolo, bro. You like, like the dude Bolo that used to be in all the kung fu movies. <laughs> Nigga had one big foot. Nah, it wasn't Bolo. It was the other dude. You should be able to child She was probably man. scared of Godzilla too. <laughs> Fuck you, Miss Lee. You failed me for no reason. Oh my I God. told you I passed. I had mama, already mama. took your Who's class. Who's laughing now? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, look who's laughing now. I ain't gonna call you no name, but I'm, look who laughing now. Yeah, but shout out to Miss Lee too, cause when I used to come to her class high. And I answer questions, it scared her, so she give me a hall pass and let me burn off and go. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> She's like, get out of here. I'm not taking this. You being smart today, fuck that. Be stupid. Just don't. But um, you know what I'm saying? I had a lot of teachers, and I can name a couple. Mr. Artisan, he was my English teacher and he was my literature teacher. This guy was crazy. He actually gave me an article in the school paper, and I'm such a horrible person with good intentions that I wrote an article about a teacher who used to drive on a, a little bitty handicap car. No hands, no fingers? Nah, she got hands. <laughs> see, see, see? I'm hey. staying away from No, 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 no. Look, I, for the red, it, you, no, said, you, you said, no, imagine this podcast had, had no hands oh, or no fingers. Oh, we no This would be a fucked up podcast. We all would be knuckling up, right, man? No, chill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I touch your iPad like this. Man. Nah. Dude, chill. But look, so... The next man, Spider Man, my oh, Spider Knuckle, <laughs> but, uh, my <laughs> so so bro, she was actually had like a motorized wheelchair, bro, and I gave the I had the lead article in the school paper. It was I had a picture of her pointing her name, and they named her Hot Rod Malone. Wow. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Hey, I'm gonna send y'all a copy of it. I'm gonna send y'all a copy of it. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm gonna send you a copy of it. But it was it was like for me, we had a I had teachers who cared about us mm -hmm. enough to talk to us and say, Hey, y'all need to learn how to invest. Hey, um, don't wear earrings. I'm like, why not wear earrings? She was like, in the past when Black man ears was pierced. That was how the slave master knew who his slaves were. They would pierce their ears. That was how they would keep them. Which now, I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean that or whatever, but you know. Cool. No, it does. Well, I ain't got mine Nigga, pierced. How you would you know? How you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, it still does. Yeah. Yeah. It was slaves, so <laughs> Wow, this guy. Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I guess I just breathe. I don't know. Maybe it was the Duce. Shout out to the Duce. <laughs> them couple of shots. <laughs> like, them couple of shots really yeah. turned yeah. some shit up. You know what I'm saying? But no, hey, we needed the content. No, but we've been, we, we been talking about this music, right? Yeah. All right, now it's time. Now it's time to put it to the test. All right, it's time to put it to touch. You got the beats queued up? Jesus Christ. All right. Look, what we, ladies and gentlemen, what we're doing to do right now, right, we're about to show, showcase my man Tim Nix, you know what I'm saying, here in Los Angeles, California, all the way from Houston, Texas. He's going to give you a sample. And right after he gives you a sample, we got my man's guru. Slide sitting out. Over, sitting over in the corner, right? You know what I'm saying? Low key, recording everything. You know what I'm saying? Getting, having us looking Cuckoo. good. Cuckoo! Word about up. to put him to the test as well. Word right? up. Right? Either you put this in. If you always ready, you don't got to get ready. Yeah, you Some, got, something yeah. along those lines. You ain't got to get ready. Right. Stay ready. Ready? Is this for Tim right here? It better be. Oh, he playing something slow. Yeah. Feel that. Feel Let me that. see. Hey, what happened? Forward, everybody. Yeah. Let me see. Tim Nix. Tim Nix. Let me give y'all some. Text on the beat. Just a bad boy, y'all chasing cash money. Let my tribe call Quest. Never take that from me. 
I rap a lot, this murder ain't for rap dummies Run and get the DMC, aimed at your tummy Pimp can see high niggas on the bun crumbing Ice cubes melted, a hundred bars and running Wreck shop tops drop, it don't stop coming Screwed up the click, slow down, records jumping nah. The Don Key to unlock the commission The hardest pit with yellow stones, mob style conditions 3-2 Buddha baby, blowing big, ain't no tripping My life zero to count on when I'm sipping nah. No biggie, too small, sky with no limits Master peed out the trunk with no gimmicks Jay's on, hit the rock, hustle hard with it On the freeway with beans, I'm bleak behind the digits A sporty thief ducking shit from pigeons Outcast this big boy's three thousands vision uh. Yeah, I'm just, you know. Yeah, yeah. you got to ease quick. on to it. Yeah, hey, Guru, know. go, Guru, come on over here, man. Yeah, come on over here, you go, Guru. Yeah, come on over here. I ain't got but 3% on my phone, so you got yeah, I got six. You got six? Yeah. Oh, man, let me get out your way. You want to change up the beat for Guru? No, he ain't even got to our acapella. Oh, Your okay. acapella? Oh, 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 yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. He, Let me give you a nice right. intro, though, all right? Let's go. All right. <clears throat> hey, ladies and gentlemen. Stepping up to this table right now into the microphone, we got my man's guru all the way from Houston, Texas, representing. All right, he's the responsible one in the group today. All right. But am, I, am I the whole life? Right, Shit, man. I had a few right. of them shots too. Hey, man, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep you right. So what am I? No, you, you nah, enjoying you the stand. moment. He, he making stand. sure you stay in cool. line. Yeah. All right. But no, nah, <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, man, it's a pleasure, it's an honor. All right, to have my man Guru here sitting at the table. Uh, it's your microphone. It's your go. Y'all know what time it is. Don't watch me watch Dynamite TV. Guru Dynamite in the building. Macho told me, cream rises to the top. Dynamite translation, cream of the crop. They love your failures, but hate your excellence. I'm sorry being negative, not even in my preference. Attention or addiction, it's all the same conviction. We all need a break. The media is a sickness. They build you up to tell you down and it's a cold world. Make your OD or drink so much you talk to Earl. Mm -hmm. Trying to impress people that really ain't your people. Addictions to hearts and lights that can be lethal. Don't let them shock, don't let them stop your shine. No matter how they treat you, navigating through the trolls and the way they treat you, they love LeBron right after he got swept. Then they start hating LeBron right after he left. Crossover, spin move, pump fake, they fall for it. They waiting for you to fall over the edge like nuts. So IG cappers, you gusto from CB4 to block gassed you up. That's that cheap Petro. No talents, the new talent. Standing out is the balance. Don't worry about the don't worry about what the people say. That's always the challenge. Nice. I like okay. that. I like okay. that. Hey, you go. Everybody go. No, on, so no, you go no, ahead. No, no. I'm a producer. <laughs> <laughs> Killer, you got some flow. Watch. Killer, you getting on? You getting on? I be on that P. Diddy shit. Like, uh. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, but, but no, go. so I, I ain't, I'm going I'm to put it out here like this. I ain't no MC. I'm a creator. Okay. I don't go by rap. I don't go by MC. I'm a creator because I create art. Uh, You got the music. You got my podcast, Big Propaganda. Shout out to you boys, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to you boys back in the age. I also do I also do movies as well. Okay. So, you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah, the Michael B. Making Jordan and shit. Okay. And everybody can put out your handles out there. Oh, yeah, y'all know what time it is. Guru Dynamite. That's G-U-R-U-D-Y-N-A-M-I-T-E on all social media platforms. <laughs> He about to start rapping again. Yeah, I, I do. Don't let him lie to y'all, bro. He is an MC. Is okay. Nah, I'm not an MC, bro. I'm a creator. I keep on telling you that. I don't, okay. I don't go by that no more. All right. But nah, <laughs> hey, so, okay, so, Tim, you're going to come back on a little bit, but let me do my thing. I'm going to let Guru start it off, right? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the conclusion of our show. At the end of every show, we always open up the microphones and the tables to our guests, to our hosts, to leave any parting words of wisdom, any nuggets they want to share with the world, all right? We're going to be hospitable right now, right? So we're going to start off with Killer, man. Is there anything you would like to share to anyone listening, anyone watching? Anything you want to share? Continue to always be you, nobody else. Always take your time in this game, be patient and be humble and try to just be of some type of change in this world don't follow the masses 
even if it's taking a little longer for you, it's okay. It's, it's coming. Just uh, continue to be you. That's all I tell people, man. Most deaf. Mm -hmm. Guru. Man, one of the things I would tell people and to uh, always to try to build on is learning how to get you a team and run with your team. Mm -hmm. Don't try to outshine everybody, man. It's always, everybody can eat off this plate. You know what I'm saying? It's not about who's the biggest dog or who's the top dog. I got a song that I'm about to come out with called Best Rapper Alive. But I'm trying to tell people that I ain't gotta be the best rapper alive. I'm just out here trying to get it. I don't care if I'm the third best. I don't care if I'm the fourth best. I don't care if I'm the ninth or the tenth best. As long as I'm eating, as long as my family is is eating from that, mm -hmm. I'm good. It's not about that, man. It's not about being the best. It's about getting in where you fit in, for real, for real. Most tough, most tough. GQ Nesto, switch out uh, with uh, Google. GQ Nesto, anything you would like to share? Share, I just gotta say, um, love is oxygen you know what i mean let's let's show yeah, some love you know what i mean let's um uh, definitely appreciate what we have and stop focusing on what we don't have you know like kanye said and uh yeah i appreciate the whole support thank you guys for coming down from yeah, texas no, thank you, we man. really appreciate that and uh you know we definitely wish you the best all mm. right tim anything you would like to share well, first and foremost, I want to thank y'all for taking the time out to listen to my music and then also taking the time out to contact me and touch bases with me and, you know, offer me an opportunity to come out and, you know, even not just me, but Killer and Guru, offering us the opportunity to come out and kind of let people get to know me, Killer, and Guru, and let them get to know why some of the music sounds like it sounds or why I think like I think. And then actually putting up with me for what, two and a half hours or not, three and a half hours? Because I've been saying some wild shit. <laughs> no lie, man. I said some wild shit, and I'm pretty sure somebody going to be mad. And I appreciate y'all for being mad, because if you're mad, that means I know I got an effect on you. But um, uh, pretty much, I just want to thank y'all. I want to thank Killer, and I want to thank Guru, and I want to thank anybody that has supported me over the years or has encouraged me over the years or has spoken things to discourage me over the years. Everything that people do, I take into consideration and I use for motivation. So if you've ever said anything bad about me, I appreciate you. If you ever said anything good about me, I appreciate you. And love is love. And like my man said, <laughs> love is also oxygen. And um, this won't be the last time I'll be here. We'll, you know, things uh, as things progress and, you know, whenever they want me here, I'm here. I'll be here. Whenever y'all want me here, whatever y'all need me to do, you know what I'm saying? I'm here. I have no problem. You know what I'm saying? We work together, you know what I'm saying? Because I really enjoyed this. This is this was a great conversation, being able to hear other people speak on different things and even the questions you asked me. And then just being able to just be me, that's the most exciting thing. Cause that's that freedom. Bars. That freedom. Bar this motherfucker here, man. Bars. <laughs> I'm about to take him back to Texas with me, man. He ain't, ain't going to come back, man. I'll pause. You out of there. But, yeah, um, and, 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 you know, and first and foremost, just um, just really just thank y'all, man. Y'all y'all made me feel like, you know what I'm saying, very, very welcome very honest very open and you know we enjoy laugh, laughter and seriousness and all everything you know what i'm saying and that's that's just me that's just me but that's for that's sure. all i can that's all i can pretty much say for sure for sure um uh, i would say is a referring back to a conversation that we was having in the kitchen uh what's trendy is trendy what's trendy doesn't last mm -hmm. um i would say it's okay with not wanting to be a sheep all right, Fuck create that. your own trends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> create, create your own lane. You know what I'm saying? Right. Do what's comfortable. Do, do what's authentic to you. But I'm your boy Drew. We thank you for all the love and the support. Continue to watch us and see us grow. And we got some big things lined up uh, coming up in the near future. We are Option Four Podcast. We love you. We thank you. We see you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.